Good morning. Today is November 13th, 2023. The time is um, 9.41 a.m. Welcome everyone to the meeting. This meeting is following an open meeting laws and is open to the general public. We will be performing an audio only recording of this meeting. We will begin with clarification of the COVID policy voted on by the board. Um, I did pass out what I think we should do. I think we re should rescind the vote for the Whitman um, Public Health Office, the Depart the health agent, the administrative assistant, and the public health nurse to not interpret or advise on the CDC's policy and to take the policy as written. If people call questions to direct them to the TA, Town of Whitman, um, the, to the TA for Town of Whitman. Do I have a vote to rescind that? I have, I have a question. motion. Yeah, yes, I go ahead. Um, right there. You mean not? To not. Yeah, okay. thank you. I corrected it over here. Thank so. you. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to rescind that? So moved. Second. Vote? Two yeses. And in replacing that, um, the Board of Health and the Whitman Department of Public Health Office, the department head, the public health agent, the administrative assistant, and the public health nurse are always available to help and advise the public with any concerns, COVID-19 or otherwise. Any statement made by anyone else suggesting otherwise is inaccurate, disingenuous, and misleading. What the above mentioned entities will not do is interpret the CDC COVID-19 policy for any town employee and or town unions for the purposes of determining time off, time off. The CDC policy is very clear in determining how many days of isolation, masking, et cetera, are needed. Any questions regarding time off or clarification of time off regarding the COVID-19 policy for town employees unions are to be directed to the Human Resources Department Town Administrator's Office. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Vote? Favor. Yes, two yeses. You okay with that, Dan? Yep. Yeah, great. <clears throat> 13, 13, 20, 23. So we'll send that back upstairs. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. We will now move on to discuss the Board of Health budget proposed for fiscal year 2025. So, in this packet, we have our budget. And we have a letter we received from the town administrator's office. And um, the second paragraph is the point I want to bring um, to the board's attention. And it reads, attached is the portion of the budget that pertains to the Board of Health for fiscal year 2025. This year, please use a 2.5% increase for department head salary increase. Please level fund all of the other expenses in your budget. Um, I have talked to other department heads. I have spoken with our um, liaison, who's Dr. Carl Kowalski. The other department heads I've spoken to, I've not spoken to all, but the ones I've spoken to, no one has been asked to level fund their budget. Um, Dr. Kowalski had no knowledge of us being asked to level fund our budget. I question what good the finance committee is if we're being asked to level fund our budget. Why would we go before the finance committee? What is their use if we're being told we're going to level fund our budget? Um, as this letter came from Mary Beth Carter. Um, I'm concerned. I'm concerned it disrupts the whole process of the way the whole budget system is set up. Um, so, Dr. Kowalski did not know we had been sent this to <coughs> level fund our budget. Um, I explained to him that my recommendation to the board is that we do not level fund our budget, that we put in for what we absolutely feel we need, and he understood that we would be doing that. Tom, comment? Yeah, I do have a comment. Um, it seems like there's maybe a disconnect. <coughs> and the disconnect seems to be that we found out that we're being level funded um, without 
two things. One, without the chair knowing that that happened. And two, in, in checking with other departments that other people were not given the same directive. Am I correct? Right. I right. mean, there's no... Why were we given this directive, I guess? Is what I would suggest is going back to um, the town administrator and have a discussion as to why. Was it a, a, an error? Was it... Um, Oh, I don't think it was an error. I'm not going to speak for her, but what I what I think, in order to keep good relationships with everybody, that we find out what the thinking was, what the reasoning was, and was the finance committee and the selectmen involved. And the finance there, committee have no, has no knowledge also. Okay. I do know that. Well, maybe we should have that discussion. I, I, that's what I think. Um, have the discussion with... Um, the <coughs> selectmen do not know. The finance committee did not know. Um, I made it very clear that we would be sending up our minimum budget, you know, that we feel we can work with, mm -hmm. with minimum increase that we absolutely need. And um, I just do want to add in, I will, in the next couple of weeks, after today, I'll send up a final to Mary Beth. I'll sit with her. I think she sent the email to me knowing the position that the town was in, the chance of us getting a new school, and that she would most likely be recommended that we were level funded. Um, I think it came off the wrong way. Um, so what I have in front of you is not a level funded budget, but I think it's what we would be necessary to move forward. Um, so I'd sit with Mary Beth, give her the reasoning why this is the way it is, and then at that point she'll either decide to go ahead with the level funded that she's kind of hinted at, or maybe she'll change her mind and take some of these recommendations and also recommend that, and then when I sit with Fincom, I'll have our request, the selectmen's recommended, and then um, Fincom will make a decision. Myself and Danielle will go to that meeting, make a case for why we're asking for these things, and then we'll go forward from there. Either FinCom will recommend and agree with us, or maybe they won't, or maybe they'll go half and half. Um, and then always at the end of the day, if we don't like what the other two parties have decided, we could get up at town meeting and speak on the floor in favor of the budget of a different way. Um, so that process will still happen. I just wanted that to be clear. Um, um, this is what I think. I think putting you in the middle of this is not it's not fair, first of all. Second of all, to add another person with another discussion about later on we'll find out what the other people at town meeting is not. This the way is how the budget process goes here. What's that? The we work it out here. Yeah. Then it goes to the town administrator with Dan. And then it goes to the And then we go to the finance committee and we present there. I guess what I'm saying, Danielle and Dan, is this is that if you have a conversation with the powers to be, and then let's stop this writing back and forth. I don't think you're getting anywhere. We're not writing. We didn't. Well, let me just finish, okay. Danielle. I would suggest we go to the to the selectmen's meeting and say, "Can you clarify the situation so it doesn't become a, a a controversial kind of situation?" That's all. You're in the you're in the beginning stages. There's no rush for us to give them the budget, is there, or is there? There is. Yeah. The, there is? In, a, in what way? We're on a time line. We're on a yeah, deadline. Yeah, they, they what, May I ask what deadline it is, though, Daniel? It's their Mary Best. The yeah, it's, it's how they normally go. Deadline. Because at this point, what she wants to do in November is to sit with each and every department head, have budget discussions, because then as soon as the beginning of January, FinCom will start sitting with department heads, chairs, and go through it. It's the due process that they've always done here. Um, Department heads get sent out the initial budget from town and county, treasury collector, to town minister. They say, hey, listen, get it back to us, and then we'll have a conversation together. So that's how it's always gone there. It works okay. I understand this has been drawn out a little bit. I've never asked to just submit level funding. No one's like, listen, submit what you might need. However, I'm just going to let you know there's a good chance I'm going to recommend it's level funded given the current fiscal climate of the town. Um, at this point, with the conversations Danielle's had, that I've had, I'm comfortable with voting on this budget today, having you guys vote on it. I'll submit it to Mary Beth later today, and of course, when I go to have that meeting with her, 
all three board members could come if they wanted to. We would have to post have to for a meeting, right. but we could absolutely do that. Um, and then it would go. And from after that meeting, I would sit with Fincom, and again, <clears throat> everyone could come if they would like, and so on and so forth. You know, I'm new, but I just heard you say this is the way we've always done. How many times? The excuse way. me. Excuse me. How many times have you got a letter that says you will submit, you will uh, order, you will have a budget of two and a half percent with other parts level funded? Ever before? Never. Then it's not the same. Then that's well, what I'm saying. That's I think the point of. I did speak with Dr. Carl Kowalski, and he was going to speak to the TA about the letter um, and clarify that, you know, why are we, um, he is our liaison for the Board of Health. And my question is, why are we put in this position now if it's never happened before? Exactly. If that's what they want, I will, I will go along with it. But What we need to do today is vote on this budget and either vote yes or no. To me, to me I think it was... Mary Beth is very financial forward. She's looking at the forecast of the big picture, and she knows when it comes down to it, just like last year, she got put in a position where she came in and the town was 600000 over, and she had to find places to cut. And I think she's looking at it, and she's like, I'm going to have to do this again. Unless people just come in at level funded, then I won't have to cut them. So she sent it out requesting, hey, level fund. It should have, in my opinion, been, hey, just so you know, you're most, I'm most likely going to recommend your level funded. However, ask for what you feel you need, and then we'll have a conversation. We have probably the smallest budget in the town. Yeah. Um, I think it is the smallest, the yeah. smallest budget in the town. We make very small requests every year. Um, we just don't want to stay stagnant year after year. And we are trying to increase our programs. Um, one of the things we've been looking to do that we re really can't do right now because we don't have the funding is we, um, we're looking to do a Narcan um, AED training for the town. Um, but again, it costs money. Anything we do costs money and we can't move forward with something like that. Our sharks, um, I wanted to bring that up later, but I'll bring it up now. Our Sharps drug take back day was wildly successful. Um, we took in four times as many as um, any other town of drugs. We took in 400 pounds of drugs, and we took in several huge boxes of Sharps. So, um, again, and we do this twice a year, so it was a wildly successful program, and we'd like to keep that going. But again, this stuff costs money. Um, you know, and one of the things that it costs is advertising that I'm paying out of my own pocket. And I'd love to get this into the budget and out of my own pocket because if we don't advertise, people don't come. Um, Can I make another comment? Sure. My comment is not about the money. It's not about um, the town administrator. She's unbelievably good. She's she's excellent. My question is about process, and process is important because if you follow a process and all of a sudden you uh, deviate from that, then you really have kind of a problem of she said, he said, or any of that stuff. It's the same thing in the contract or in a personnel thing. In places it says must, and then it refers to the same exact <coughs> situation. It says may, or the board has, or that particular board has a. Uh, um, the discretion of, of granting different things. To me, it's, it is important. Um, I will vote for this because what I would hope is in the future we wouldn't have this situation. And we can bring up the same thing we're bringing up right now when, when you talk to Mary Beth. But I think it's important to know that there is a process and whether it's some hard and difficult conversations and we're doing it publicly, that's the way it is. And um, there's no hard feelings here. I just think it should be cleaned up. Um, that's all. I agree, and we, we are shocked. We were shocked when we got the letter. Um, we were shocked when we asked around the, to other department heads if they've gotten these letters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it were across the board, that would have been a little more understanding to us. Um, not sure why we got the letter. Um, if you'd like, we uh, can go to the selectmen's meeting tomorrow night and ask. I don't think I want to do it that publicly, though. We're publicly right now. I know, but that's 
<laughs> I'm not afraid of public. I know. I, I'm afraid of, of, of inconsistency and, and not having an accurate report to people who are, who are affected by this. That's all. But I'll, I'd like to move that we close the discussion. Okay. Um, we do need to vote on our budget. Yeah. And that's what I'm closing. Um, we have a motion on the floor and you left discussion, so now we get a vote on it. Okay. Um, I need a second on the motion, though. I need to find the motion again. It is that we accept this. Uh, we, we, could, uh, we were moving to discussion, discussing it. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Um, we don't have a motion yet. So, do you have any questions on any line items on the budget? No. Okay. Um, Dina, I have a question for you. We don't expect any of our, like, our hazardous waste disposal or anything to go up during this. I spoke with Claire and not at this time. Not at this time. Yeah. Okay. Um, we. They had cut our recording secretary last year and um, we put it back in this year because it had been in there every year um, and we feel that um, we can't guarantee, especially with Jamie's schedule, that we're going to stay at the mornings that we're not going to have to move tonight. Yep. So we would like the recording secretary back in and there so we that, could put that back in. The $900 number is just for 12 three-hour meetings. Obviously, they won't all go three hours, but right. also gives time for them to do meeting minutes and right. whatnot. And that's at a $25 an hour rate, which Frank did when he was back as acting town administrator before Mary Beth came back. He did a study and found that that was the appropriate rate to and pay a recording secretary. Somewhat appropriate yeah. for a recording yeah. secretary. So um, we did put that back in. Um, and the expenses, again, that would be to run um, extra programs. Also, the other thing I want to bring you to is it says visiting nurses. We are, again, I fought for this last year. We are going to get that changed to public health nurse. We do not want anybody to think you are visiting nurses. Um, <laughs> Um, I brought this up to the FinCom and to the TA last year, and again, if I have to, if it's not changed we upstairs, will we will again bring this up um, because I feel that's misleading to the public, and if I have to change it on the town hall floor this year, I will. Um, it is very misleading, and we don't want to do that. So, um, Anyway, do I have a motion to approve the budget as listed? Um, so for <coughs> the twenty fiscal year twenty twenty five. So moved. Motion. I need a second. Second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Vote. Yes. Two yeses. All right. Approve twenty. Okay. And you have been heard. Yeah, I think so. You have been. I'm sure. Thank you. We will move on to rescind the assistant burial agent's appointment of Jennifer DeVasto as she has taken another position within the town hall. We will appoint a new ABA when one is hired. Do I have a motion to rescind the assistant burial agent appointment of Jennifer DeVasto for the remainder of fiscal year 2024? So moved. Motion. A motion second. Second. Vote. Two yeses. Yes. Do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes for 10 16 2023? Motion. I motion. Second. Vote. Yes. Two yeses. Great. We will move on to the health agents report once I find it. Um, Mr. Kelly, is there anything you'd like to discuss before we go on accepting your report? Nothing, unless anyone has any questions. Um, the rabies quarantines are dogs, correct? Correct. Okay. I actually just received another one today, but also just a dog that's been vaccinated, so. What'd you say? What? What'd you say? We got another one in today, that's all. Another dog, no. Uh, okay. Yep. So now we get three dogs. Um, special town meeting, um, oh, can, oh, did you bring a translator? Yes. 
Oh, yeah. they have a new trans. We're part of a. We can tell them about the consortium a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we're part of a group of five towns, a part of the Public Health Excellent Grant Group. Um, this. I don't know the exact number anymore. There's something like 20 different groups throughout the state. Um, we receive funding from DPH and the state of Massachusetts to do different things to help move public health forward. Um, at this point, we're in the middle of drafting up the contract and whatnot for a shared service inspector and a shared service um, social worker. Um, this is one of the little gadgets we've got through the consortium they paid for it. It's a translator. Um, it, for us, we need this once in a while, but especially for our nurses, they always are looking for translation services. Um, so one of the cool things that it can do, basically, you can go and you can talk into it and then it will read something back to you. So it say, hello, Mr. Evans, how can I help you today? Uh, so basically, you can also show it to them. Uh, there's like something like 85 languages in here, and over 70 of them will actually talk to the other 10 ish. They won't, but all of them, they will show the text from English to mm -hmm. Spanish in this case, and vice versa. Um, so it's neat. A lot of the phones can kind of do this. I played with this and the phone a bit. This seems to be a little bit better. Um, so we're going to give it to Kim and see how she does with it and uh, how she can report back to us. Um, another thing through that, we use language rock solutions you might have heard earlier. Um, and hopefully over the, in the next like week or so, we'll actually be able to pay for any time we use their service through that grant group. Um, so it's pretty neat. It generally is one meeting a week on Wednesdays. The five of us towns meet in our coordinator and we talk what we want to do. I will say a lot of the times DPH is having us put on the brakes even though we're ready to go. Uh, we were the first group in the whole state to hire coordinators so we were really on the ball and we're on the ball with everything else and we've been told to kind of just wait up. We're in the group with Abington, Brockton, Avon and Stoughton. Um, Abington is the municipal lead. It actually dates all the way back to when Marty Golight was there, you all well, know him, but um, he was awesome. Uh, he's since moved on, however, there's two people over there, Chris and Lindsay, are still great. Um, so they're currently the lead, and we kind of just help out in any way we can to push things along. But So that's a little bit about the Public Health Excellent Grant Group and the neat little gadget we got from them. So you say you're giving that to Kim, are you going to have access when you need it? Yeah, so we're actually, we just got the first group of them in. Each of us is going to get one more as well, okay. so we'll have two per town. I'm just thinking when you have... Yeah, Brockton, I mean, if Brockton needs more, obviously, kind of through the grant group, we all vote on things, and if something like that, Brockton might need four, close to two. Tends to but we'll be left here, so you have Yeah, we'll have, we'll have, yeah, so I'll, I'll end up today, like I said, we don't use it as much. I'll let Kim. Brockton has actual translators well, on staff. Well, I'm thinking of your, yeah. yes, I will have one. You know what I'm Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. but um, yeah, Brockton's lucky to have a staff of 20-something people in all the department, many of which also speak multiple yeah. languages, which so is we're, we're, we're very excited about the social because we see a need in town uh, that there are yeah. instances where we really <coughs> use a social worker um, that Dan comes across and uh, fire sometimes comes across that we could really use a social worker and we're very excited about that. We think that's going to be a really positive. Yeah. Um, did you, did one of you go to the uh, nurses meeting? It hasn't happened yet. Oh, yeah. okay. We're looking at dates. And oh, all right. We'll see. Yeah. At this point, Lindsay and Kim are the only ones that seem interested right now, so we're trying to get some okay. of the town's people. Do we need supplies? What's up? Are we in need of supplies? That will be something they'll talk about at that point. Are you in need of any supplies though, right now? What do you need supplies? Like well, we're having a meeting to order necessary well, supplies. I'm asking if you're in need of supplies now. Well, I, I'm, yeah, they I have need something to help me <laughs> translate. But otherwise, uh, do you have what you need? Just needles, which I don't really need stuff like that. But yeah. if, at the time, just, when we just have time, time more than anything, I need. No, no, no. Yeah. but um, 
No, once we, in my opinion, which I haven't had this conversation with Kim because there's no scheduled okay. meeting for that, we can sit down and say if we want to order just things with band aids, just to have them, new stuff. Because I know there's stuff in there, a lot, well, some of it's newer because of everything with COVID, but just to have stuff in there. Right. So my thing is if DPH is. It's nothing we should be buying right now for them. I don't think so, no. Okay. That's my question. I propose to that. How long has it been since um, the current organization of our board and our staff been this way? Because let's say if it was 30 years ago or more. What way? In other words, what we have now available to us, a nurse, so forth. Oh, no. We were part-time until a few years ago. Okay, just a couple of years ago. Because we always been visiting there. Yes, yeah, so we are growing. Visiting. And if you want to, if you ever want to see how a health department of this town size should be run, go over to Abington. They have it together. They yeah. have a robust health department with a good staff of, of several full-time people. Yeah. They're running full vaccination programs. If you take away the trash, they also do trash, which is, of course, in the millions of dollars budget. But if you take away that and just have their staff there, their budget's like four times what ours is. And they're running full, robust vaccination, all the vaccines um, for everybody. They run an amazing health department, and it's what we could only strive to be. But we'll never have the budget. Would you, would you guess that our needs are just as great as this? Oh, yeah. Yes, I think our needs are as great, but we their budget there is less than. Um, they also have they also have full time RNs on staff. That's that's a goal. It is a goal. It would be my goal to to model Abington's board of health, and I tell people that I tell you know anybody that asks the FinCom. Uh -huh. um, and they have an amazing person running it too. I'm not that Dan's not amazing <laughs> at all. I didn't mean that, Dan. Um, but their RN over there is, um, you know, Marty Golightly is left, and he's did he set that up? What that program over there? The vaccine program. The whole thing. It's just. Yeah, I mean the difference between. They have four full-time people. Yeah, they, they have four yeah. full-time people over yeah. there. Um, it's just, it's what we would strive to do if we were going to be a robust full-time, we are full-time, but, you know, a full-service health department. Let's put it that way. A full-service is a better way to word it, health department. Um, besides, I mean, people don't realize everything we do. The I know I didn't have a clue. T you know, Dan goes to all the dismantlings, yeah. the tenant landlord complaints, all the road mm -hmm. complaints. I mean, just goes on and on. Now that we are um, a right to farm community, let, let's just vote on Dan's report. And I'll tell you this, all right? A motion to accept the health agents report refile motion. Yes. yes. Second. Second. Vote. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now that we're a right to farm community, that is now that put on us too. You know how they put the paper bags on us a few years ago and they tried to put the nips on us last year? Well, this year it's the right to farm. Um, so with that, they waived where you were at that town meeting, right? That was. They waived the reading. Right. <clears throat> because it was too long for people. Well, I think that was, that was the, the genesis of it. I think it was a mistake to wait for reading because in the reading was the third part. I mean, I meant to bring it, but I didn't. But um, in waiving the reading, they also waived the part that said noise, rodents, dust, Roosters. Um, nuis I mean, nuisances are now part of the right to farm community. So people kind of lost their, their right to complain about their next door neighbors, chickens, dogs, yeah. cats, roosters, whatever. Um, in that, and people voted it through without reading that, and um, hopefully they read it before they voted. Um, so that's part of ours now too. Um, we're we're going to wait and see what ha what comes of that. Dan thinks it's not. I think we're going to end up with a lot more chickens, roosters, camels, ostriches, or whatever. Um, Dan, well, they say cameloids, you know. So <laughs> it's funny you say that, Daniel. East Bridgewater Y, right next door to it. 
I believe they're emus or... or yep, we can off. get those now. It sounds yeah, like the trumpet's boys. going off every two, five, five minutes. Yeah. Now. I don't know. So, I don't know. Dan doesn't think much is going to change. I think we're going to see a lot more backyard chickens and a lot more backyard chicken farmers and roosters. and So, we'll see. Um, it could increase Dan's inspections a lot. Or it might just stay status quo. It's just going to be one of those wait and sees. But again, that's on us um, without any increase in manpower or funding. So thank you for giving me that opportunity to say that. Go ahead. <laughs> that's right. awesome. <laughs> we will now move on to the public health nurses report. I have two of them. So one's amended. That's yeah, hard to tell. The one with the date next to the TV. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Miss Bombardier, is there Mrs. Bombardier, is there anything you'd like to discuss? I'm not sure. You know, you have questions for I do have questions. <laughs> so, my question is this. Thank you for adding the dates. We were looking for, so I understand from discussing with you that the dates next to the TV, they're new and you're not putting the ones, the older ones on here? If I'm not following them. Only if they're active. Only if they're active. All, all, all former reports under the month, those were cases that came in that month. So, so what about the ones you're still following from the month before? Well, these... There aren't any yeah. from the month before that I'm still following. These two, however, are still being these followed These two now are active TV. Active yep. TV cases. Okay, so next TV. month we might still see these dates on the report. Well, I, I, they'll fall into a different mm -hmm. category. Why? Maybe. Because they're not newly reported. But we still want to know that you're following. Yes, it would be under my act activities that I'm, um, we what I'm doing. But I'm giving you counts of what came in for the month. We're trying to also figure out how many you're following that month. Yes, yeah, so basically I'm, next I'm month, if nothing, else, if nothing else comes in, these two would still be on there. If a one new one comes in. It would not be under... It would be under my activities. Yes, yep. Perfect. To me, that's fine. And then once they become unactive, the person finishes taking their series of meds, they would then be washed off the activities. Correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll still be able to tell that there's up oh, there's still those two yes. active cases yes. from October going on. I, I think Where I, are think we Dan, see I that? see Daniel's point, but it says all communicable cases uh, counts are current, so they could have been current for three months, and they're still in current. The month of the report. Yeah, correct, of correct. So. Yeah, but she's talking about are there any new ones? And well, I want to know. This is what I want to know. So see, see the one that started. Say, let's just pick one. The one that started ten sixteen. All right. Okay. So next month, if you're still following that, and you have a new one, let's say you'd have. TV 3, 10, 16, 10, 24, and then 11, 2, or whatever. I'm not going to put a disease from the previous month in the report for communicable diseases. It will fall into an activity. It's no longer newly reported. So it'd be under like the office visits slash community assistance category or something like yeah. that, correct? Yeah. Okay. But then we don't know how many active TV cases. Well, no, we would know it was active because if it wasn't active, it just wouldn't be on there. So we would see these two, they'd be under the community assistance because they're still active. But then under the community, well, if there was, say, one from 11-2, the 11-2 would be there. So we could see the two old ones from up to, and then say the next month well, goes by. It wouldn't be able so, to say. It wouldn't well, we say. Would because the, no, it would, because it's just saying the 10, 16, 10, 24, they'd be down under community assistance, which lets us know, yeah, that's still going on. And then say December but rolls around. say TB2 and the dates under community assistance? I'm sure it could, if, yeah, that wouldn't be an issue, right? Yeah, you, you and need then, to know that it. Any case that she's following is going to be for TV, active TV, will go for six to nine months. Yeah. Depending upon what the course of treatment has been decided by the provider. 
So right. They can still stay active for that. Long. So if the fire chief of the hospital comes to us and says, we want to know how many active TVs you're following right now, how are we going to come up with a number? Well, she has it. It's a two. Two. Yeah. two. Okay, so next month you have another. Where am I going to find... Next well, month. then there could be one under communicable diseases and one, up, and then the two under community assistance. Or maybe just, we could just add a second thing that says follow yeah. up or something, and then just a, a, another category of follow up, and have the two TVs right. there. Right. Okay. Diagnosis and two continuing. Right. That yeah. would be great. Yeah. yeah. That would be great. Like yeah. That's what I. That's, that's, that's what that's, 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 Yeah. Like I would, any new ones would go in under the communicable diseases that I'm reporting for the month. And I will have my ones I'm following still will be separate. All right. As long as they're dated and we can say, you know, this is this case, this is this case. So we can tell them apart. I tell them what apart. Like, they're, they're right. active cases. I have two active cases. Right. But then when we drop off, we know that this one dropped off and that one dropped off. Do you see what I'm saying? But it hasn't happened. But like it here. hasn't happened yet, but yeah. it will. So I'll be it when it does. Okay. It does. Well, I don't understand why you're defensive about it because, um, you know, we have a right as a board to the information. Sure. Okay. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you. I, I don't okay. understand why. Okay. I guess it's the it. format that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to me, I guess what we can do is when next month comes on, which will be the first time we have active TV that isn't brand new that month. So we had I mean, cases in August and September. Where did if, they go? But if they're not active, they, it, 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 they they required a. Um, let me say most of it's people who have immigrated yeah. into right. the United we States. We know that, yeah. and they have come in and tested. They've had a positive IR test. There have been twenty five. So where did they go? They're not in our. So they would have been reported on in previous months when they came in. But it doesn't mean it's they are diagnosed case. with active TB yeah. and require any follow-up. Okay. Other than what was in that month. Mm. For the per person reading this, I have to agree with with Kim because it basically every every category tells you follow-up required, no follow-up, no follow-up, twenty cases, no follow-up, marks, no cases. Then all of a sudden you get to TB, followed-up required began on. So I, it doesn't leave me with any question, to be honest with you, unless we're looking for something that I'm not understanding. I think as long as, as we move forward, which we'll see in the November report, it's still, hey, these two cases from October 16th and October 24th are still active and falling up, and hey, I did have a new one on November 2, which hasn't happened, but if it were to, and just as long as that's there, and they're there until they're washed off because they're no longer active, I'm fine. Right, yeah. right. As yeah. long as we can tell where they went and... Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm sure Kim will put it on. I was just shocked to find out that these weren't the September ones. No. Where did they go? Because they weren't not. They, they, they weren't they, actually. They didn't require further follow-up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because all it said at that point was TB2. So we didn't know that. Do you see where my confusion came from? You're talking about I would have to what, go back and look at No. Which, in September? Was there no, what was after it? Let me pull it. I think it said TB2. The latent TBs won't go on there because they're, they're not a threat to the public. Right. They're just, right. They're, they may be being treated, maybe they're not being treated. They are, they're no threat. They can come and go as they want to. Right. Uh, just that they are infected with the germ. And TB being very opportunistic, should they become ill with something else? Right. So if they go on here, they just, they're not active. Though. So do they go on here as latent? What I don't have the September report that you're talking about. I, would have, okay. I can pull it, it later it on. It can be LTBI and just latent TB infection. Well, just, usually it, it means that there it was a positive um, blood test. Okay. And then it later gets determined. Okay. After a lot of factors. So, um, so they can rock off our report. Okay, that's where my confusion is coming state. from. Public health can revoke it. Okay, that's where my confusion's coming from. That I guess they got revoked because I was just shocked that I I was like I thought these were the same ones we were following up on. I didn't know. No, I, I had two other ones and I haven't um, you know had further. Okay, 
I guess that's where my shock came from because I was like, these are the same ones. And you said no. And I was like, well, what happened to that? So there. Do you see my confusion there then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. And um, And any time, if there are questions about, you know, what is it, right? Feel free to call. Okay. Um, You know, and and, and it's the TV we're so concerned with right now because of the situation and the rise in TV numbers, and we are getting questions. So, um, all right, great. And still low office hours, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Is anybody listening? Kim's available every Tuesday night from 5 to 7 p.m. for blood pressure checks. And do you do blood sugar too? Yeah. Yeah, blood sugar checks. All right. Thank you. Thank you both for the clarification. Um, acceptance of the public health nurse. Yeah, you want to? Yep, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No. I was just, this is exactly what I was going to say. Yes. Acceptance yeah. of the public health nurse's report and refile motion. Second. Second vote? Yes. Yes, two yeses. Do I have a motion to accept the licenses as issued? Motion. Second? Second. Great. Vote? Yes? Yes. All right. At this time, we'd like to begin discussion on internal board of health business. Oh. All right. So we have a letter from the TA. Um, We um, took care of the COVID policy, and now we have to deal with Dan's contract. Um, Basically, it says that um, we can't do a three-year contract. Um, I have to tell you that before we did the three-year contract, I read all the bylaws, all the bylaws, and there was nothing in there saying we couldn't do the uh, three-year contract. I've also read the personnel handbook, and there's also nothing in there that says we can't do the three-year contract, but it's still coming down saying we can't do the three-year contract. Mr. Kelly is agreeable to a one-year contract. Um, He knows we value his employment greatly. And um, while it is not usual, we have been told by the TA to do a increase the vacation before his fifth or sixth year, whatever it is, um, eighth year, before his eighth year, um, we are at liberty to do that if we so see. And um, my recommendation is that we do keep that fourth year in there to, um, we have no other way to reward Mr. Kelly for his um, stellar performance other than um, including that. So if the board's in agreement, I have a comment. Sure. First of all, I like to compliment Mr. Kelly. For somebody who, for me, who's been on on the board for such a short period of time, I've learned a great deal from everybody, particularly from from Daniel. Um, One of the things that I looked at when I read this personnel, and Dan was kind enough to send the uh, digital copy to that, and I read through it. It says that um, <clears throat> well, uh, we, we received a letter that said that we do not uh, it does not it does not allow for a three year contract. My question is this: the four weeks vacation for Mr. Kelly, the board voted on September, is not meeting with the town's personnel policies and procedure outlined on vacation leave. However, the schedule indicates that in order for an employee to earn four weeks of vacation, an employee must complete more than eight years of service to 14 years of service. I believe I'm accurate when I say there have been people who have not met that uh, criteria of eight, you know, of eight years to 14 years and, and received four months, four years, four weeks of vacation. And I think it behooves us to ask if this is a break from the policy that they've set themselves, which is as must, or is it just arbitrary? Um, we have done some research on this. That is set for um, not department heads, not negotiated contracts, which Dan's is. Um, 
more for union employees um, and employees that are hourly waged. Um, and we are free to break with that. Um, they would rather we didn't, but we are free to do that. I have expressed to um, Dr. Kowalski when I met with him that um, we plan to do that if the board agreed. Um, there, there is job performance and there is job performance. When somebody exhibits and displays commitment to the job, expertise in what he's doing, uh, cooperation among the other boards, um, lends himself freely of his time, I believe he deserves an extra week. I deserve. I believe he deserves an extra week. I also believe he deserves more pay, and we are capped there. Yes, we, have we are absolutely capped there. So, um, we one of the ways we wanted to express that was with the three-year contract to give him some security. We couldn't do that. Um, I'm still not convinced we can't do that, but I'm not. It's, 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 it would be a battle. This, um, I'm willing to compromise on that, and I think Dan is too. Sorry that we're discussing you like this, Dan. Um, in order to get him the extra week vacation. I've had a conversation with both of you. Sorry to interrupt. I've had a conversation with both of you in detail about this. Um, I think you both know how I feel. And it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. And you know, I think there's a, a perception out there, and it, it may be a wrong one, but I think the perception is that in town government, every department should try to have uh, consideration for the main, the main um, financial um, situation of the town. And I really believe that we have done that by not, by accepting the fact we can't extend it. I That's one way. The other thing is, sometimes I'll say some, some committees get more than others. We're a very, very small committee, a very small committee. And the, the, the purpose of this committee is not to have any gain at all other than what? A healthier, better community. And when you have somebody who's working this hard, give them a week's vacation. That's all I say. I've also expressed my displeasure um, that, you know, I feel like the employees who have been here and have been working here hard for the town are watching all these other new department heads being brought in at very high prices with extra weeks vacation, with being working from home several days a week and other benefits that these department heads aren't afforded. And um, I think it's kind of um, a morale buster for the department heads that have been here. Um, I brought that to attention too. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I agree with you. I think we should go ahead and really. So let's vote on this. Um, do I have a motion to accept and approve the new FY 2024 employment agreement for uh, Mr. Dan Kelly as amended? Motion? Yes? Yes. Uh, vote? Yes? Yes. Two yeses. Great. Um, I would like to take this opportunity, some good news, <laughs> to uh, share the news and congratulate Whitman's Justine Rhoda from Sweet Standards, who is appearing on Season 10 of Holiday Baking Championship, which is on tonight. She is still on. She has not been eliminated yet. We um, licensed her, um, her home bakery. And uh, she's on the Food Network this month. Um, next, the new one's on tonight. I think this is the third episode. I've been watching. She's doing great. Um, uh, we wish her well, and we'll be rooting for her to win. Woo! -hoo -hoo! We'll see. Good. Um, What's her name? Justine Rhoda. She bakes out of Hanover now. Oh, she's out of Hanover now. Yeah, now. Is she in a commercial kitchen now? Or? No, not yet. She's hoping, she's been trying to for oh, well over a year now, though. Um, it's just tough. So, um, yeah, she's doing good. And she's really peppy and cheerful and fun to watch. So, is there anything else we need to discuss? Do you have to go into the... Uh, any more about the COVID protocols? Uh, no, because we did that. The first thing we did yes. was that. So I think we're good with that. 
Anybody, Dan? No. Nope. Anybody? Okay. Um, oh, we need to schedule one next meeting. Oh, December. See if I have a message from. I don't have a message from Jamie. I can reach out to her. No, I just. It's, she might call the office. Sometimes she leaves me a message too. Can I make a suggestion? You can make a suggestion. Suggestion that, in the spirit of cooperation, that we consider moving to a different time, um, and check with Jamie if there's a particular time in the evening. Yeah. I'm not sure this is working for her. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Reach out to her. Sure. What do you want to do? Any mom available? Anymore. Yeah, I know you guys are. What I could do, if we want, we can keep it up in there for now. I can reach up to Jamie today yeah. and maybe get some times at work for her, and then I can get back to both of you. And through that, we can get a date for the next meeting. Okay, the only day I'm not available is the 19th. Gotcha. And the 11th. That's the senior Christmas now. lunch. Okay, then I'm not available. Really a lot of people want to be available okay. then. Um, Tim's on his way over to the... All right. Um, at this time, we are going to hold off on scheduling. Dan will reach out to all of us. Um, again, we're, we will do what's best for Jamie. If she would like to change off Mondays, yeah. if she doesn't, that's fine. But if she would like to, that would probably be great for everybody. Monday's hard for the office. Yeah. And if, if she, we change on yeah. Mondays, that would give us Mondays to come in and do the read file, too. But I'll talk to her today yeah. and figure it out. All right. That, that's another comment. That you might have the conversation with the town. Uh, yeah, sure. It's for that. Yeah. 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 And say what day would be better. Yeah. With who? With, with Mary Beth. Well, the, as I said in that letter, my first my first thought was <coughs> the board members and accommodating the board not members. Those mm -hmm. are my priority. Um, and like I mentioned in the letter, they cut our recording secretary last year, so. Um, is there anything further to be discussed? Anybody? All right, going once, going twice. Says there's nothing to further discuss at this time. I need a motion to adjourn. So Second vote? Yes. Two yeses. Um, meetings adjourned at... 1033, that was a long meeting.